Okay, I'm here at canvasworkspace.brother.com and I'm going to go to my projects. And here is my pumpkin. I'm going to click the button to edit it. Now these pumpkin pieces all look the same. So I am going to use the text button and I'm just going to drag it on here and I'm going to put six on this piece right here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab another text and I'm going to put seven. And that's this piece. If you number these, then when you bring them down into Imbrilliance, you can get rid of the numbers. But at least you can tell what's what on those pieces that have, um, that look the same, or they can easily get confused. I did not think of this. Somebody who is much uh, smarter than me figured this out and put it in our Facebook group, and I thought it was brilliant. So let's see in the last one. Okay, and then everything else, I know what it is. But these, I just, I didn't know. So I need to take the things I want to keep off the mat. I'm going to, oop, I'm going to grab this piece and the four. I'm going to clean up the mat. Just hit delete. Okay, this piece here, his little bow tie has got some squiggles. I'm going to go real big. If you're using the downloaded version of Canvas, I'm not sure how to do this. Uh, I'm just going to take this node right here. I double click very quickly on the design to get the nodes. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag it up and hover it right over here to kind of enclose it. This is actually a punched hole in the piece of paper. And then I'm going to highlight all of these little nodes and I want to click the minus sign and make them go away. Okay, that's pretty close. Oh, that's worse. Control Z. Okay, I'm perfectly fine with leaving it like that. Okay, that is not going to make a bit of difference. I'm going to need the 24 inch mat, so I'm going to project and 12 by 24. All right, these two pieces, the stem and the neck are one fabric. And then so if you group these in canvas, they cannot be ungrouped at the machine. So don't group, you can leave your number on there. Don't group it and you can remove the numbers at the machine. So the last thing that I need to do now is to flip everything around because these are mirrored. So I'm gonna highlight the whole mat, right click and group and come up to the edit tab and flip horizontal okay that looks good and right click and ungroup because you can't ungroup them down at the machine um, now i'm going to go to project and i want to overwrite this okay and now i'm ready to download it i'm going to click download and I'm going to download to PC, and that happened, and now I'm going to download to the Scan and Cut. Okay, and we're done. All right, I'm ready to cut these out, and then I'm also ready to uh, load the designs into Imbrilliance and get them all built. Let's see, I am in... In Brilliance now, I'm going to open up Stitch Artist and I want to bring in the image first. There he is. And that's on the USB and I moved it over to my Happy Halloween and the Pumpkin folder. 
and let's see if he pops in. Oh, here, there he is. So I can see it here in the objects panel, but I cannot see it on the screen. So if you click the little button with the tree in the sun, that is show or hide background. And now I'm going to click vector and bring in the vector graphics. That's the one I just downloaded and I'm going to tell it open. Okay. These have all been brought in and what I want to do, I'm going to take this image and I want to make it last right now. So right click and move last. All right. I want to get these in the right order. So I need to get the shirt is the first thing I'm going to do is put these in the right order. So here's the shirt, right click, move first. And then number two is the neck. And I'm just going to grab it on the picture and hover it up over the one I want it to be after. Okay, I'm going to move the bow tie. I'm going to hold down the space bar. I can drag the screen and pan it. And I'm going to flip the bow tie around. I think this is the right orientation. And then I want to make the image larger so that it's about the same as the bow tie. And to see it easy, I'm going to highlight the last uh, the smile and the hold down the shift key and the top one and I'm going to change all of these to red so that I can see them. I'm going to hit red again. I want a bright red. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier. Now let me click on the image and drag it up to size approximately and then move it around till we get it about right. That's pretty darn close. That's pretty good. I could probably rotate that bow tie just a tiny bit and it would be about spot on. Okay, that's pretty close. So this gives me enough information now with the background design to be able to put everything in order. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the pieces on the applique and get them in the right orientation. Now that I've got all the pieces pretty much where I want them, I want to make sure that if any of them have broken lines, that that line is repaired. I'm going to control A to select all, and sometimes it works. There we go. And I'm going to come up to create outline and reconstruct outline, and let's see if anything moves around just a little bit. Now, if you don't have Stitch Artist 3, you will not have that reconstruct outline feature. And so if you have anything, once you turn it into applique, where the hidden stitches are not removed and hidden stitches are those stitches that are underneath another piece of applique, then you will need to turn that lower piece into its own embroidery design. And then uh, you can bring it in and merge it and the, the stitches will remove. So I'm going to hide the image right now. I'm going to turn this off and hide the image up here in the left. And what I'm looking for, first of all, is to make sure that the eyes are going to be right. And to see it all, I'm going to highlight the four pieces of the pumpkin. I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to click on the lock and hide. And then when I click on the screen, they go away. And it lets me get a real good idea of where exactly 
things are here. I'm going to zoom in close. I want to make sure that the eyelids are right on the eyes, just like that. I think I can rotate them just a little bit more to make it more even. Yeah, that looks really good right there. And then now that they're gone too, I'm looking to make sure I've got enough room right here. If these are too close right here and right here, then um, the software does not remove those hidden stitches. Okay, I'm going to unlock these and it should bring them back. <laughs> Let me highlight them again and unlock there. Okay, these look good. So this is all the applique. I need to turn these into an applique design. I, I like it. I think it's going to work just fine. So I'm going to select the whole design. And I'm going to click the applique button. And it's not letting me see it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but I can't see the stitches unless I get out of Stitch Artist. And that's annoying. Let me move this down to last again. And I can tell here the cap, you know, I've had that happen before and I'm sure it's a button that I just don't have right. So I'm making sure that the cap touches right on the edge of the pumpkin, just right on those pieces. This looks really good. Okay, so I'm going to get out a Stitch Artist, and there they are, and you can see it. It's the craziest thing that that happens. So to see the Remove Hidden Stitches, I'm going to click this uh, scissor button. That looks really good. So everything removed that needed to be removed, that I can tell. Again, if yours does not do that and you only have Stitch Artist 2, then you will want to take the lower pieces of the applique and turn them into their own embroidery design. I'm pretty happy with this. It's got a setting on the applique of what I had last time I did this, two and a half stitch length and a three stitch width. I'm sure something is there's a reason that that's not showing like that and it's me but that's okay all right now i need to go through i'm going to bring the image back in and i'm going to go through and digitize the smile lines uh, and the teeth and the eyeballs and the bow uh, the circle in the bow so i'm going to make it much bigger and in order to do that, I want to make a new design. So I'm going to um, come up to create design and begin new design. And I want this to be a drawing. And I want to make the stitch line between the eyes. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. I clicked on the draw with points and now I'm just going to do this and let me turn the image off so I can make sure that I get that final point right there. And I wanted that point to start up above the eyelids. I think that that's fine. Matter of fact, I could probably move it a little bit. I'm going to hit enter and I want to make that a run stitch and here's the run stitch button right up here. That looks good. And I want my run stitch to be a double with a 2.0 millimeter. Okay, that looks good. So for this one, let me open this up. I want this to stitch directly after the eyeball piece stitches. So I'm going to highlight this, grab it on the picture, and hover it over the eyes. And then that puts that stitch right there before the eyelids go down. And that's what you want for that one. Okay. So that needed to be a separate design to do that. And that's why, you know, and it'll, it'll renumber itself all over the place over here. Don't worry about that. I am, I'm still not, those eyelids. Yeah, 
that looks good. Okay, um, I'm going to create design and begin new design and draw with points. I'm going to bring the picture back in. And I want to do the mouth. So stitch here. And I like to do this from left to right. That's how embroidery machines like to work from left to right. And it's not real smooth right now. I'll smooth it out in just a second. And then I'm going to go through and do it for all of the others. Um, I'll do the mouth as its own design. Let me hit enter. Okay. And I want it to be a run stitch. If it says line here, you have not assigned any properties to it for stitching. So I'm going to hit run stitch. And that's what I want. And I also want it to be a little bit smoother. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing this until I'm finished. To make the lines for the mouth, I'm going to get rid of the background image because I want to make sure that this exactly meets on the corner of the mouth. Now I'm going to bring the image back in and I will do what I need to for the teeth. I want to start exactly on that line and end on the line. Okay, I want to remove the image now and make sure that I'm right on it. Everything looks good. And if you get out a Stitch Artist, you can see the stitches. That looks pretty good. And I think I want to center the smile um, just a little bit. So I'm going to highlight the mouth and all of this and I'm going to move them with my arrow keys over to the left just a little bit. There, that's better. That's a better center on that. So this looks pretty good here. And the mouth looks pretty good. Okay. Now I need to do the eyes. Back into Stitch Artist. I'm going to bring the image back in and uh, create design and begin new design. And I want my circle to do the eyes. Okay. I want that to be a fill. Okay. And I'm going to highlight it. Uh, right click and copy. Right click and paste. It pasted right on top of itself. Oop. This one, I want to move it now. Don't be like that. Fill. There, right there. Okay, that looks really good. And then the last thing is the bow on the bow tie. And experience has taught me, I'm turn this off. I want the circle, but I'm not going to hold down the shift key so it's not a perfect circle. And I'm going to draw something and I want to make sure that this is sitting directly on top of the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to grab this and bring it down and move it over just a little bit. See, I just want to make sure, because there's going to be a stitch right here. You can double click and create points. I want that sitting exactly on top of that bow tie. Okay. And then this, I'm going to apply applique stitches to it and Make sure that they're the blanket, two and a half and a three as well. Okay, so this is going to stitch after the teeth and everything. I think that's fine. Um, if you wanted to make it its own design, you could, and then have it stitch on there right after you do the bow tie, but I think it's fine. Okay, 
This looks really good. I think he's finished um, for him. Let me get, and now I need to bring in, oh, I need to, oh, I forgot to change all those colors. Darn, darn, okay. So if you want, you can go through and change them all to black. I didn't do that. That's okay. That's all gonna be one color anyway. Now, when you stitch this piece down, it is not applique. That circle is not applique. So when you get to the machine, you're just gonna skip over that placement line and just stitch the final blanket stitches, and it'll be fine, because you can't break that up. Um, and now I need to center him in the hoop. Okay, and I want to bring in the background quilting. Okay, I have all of these. This is the background quilting with the basting stitch. I'm gonna bring it in. That looks really good. Okay, and let me make sure that the basting stitch is, I think it should be nine by 11. It is, nine and an eighth by 11 and an eighth. Okay, that, that's fine. And um, I want this to be first. Excellent, okay, that looks great. If I wanted to, I could go back through here. If it if it makes you crazy that you don't didn't do that, you can do that. But I'm not going to. It'll be fine. I'm going to file uh, save as stitch and working, and this is going to be pumpkin head P E S until it save. Okay, and now I want to send it over to the embroidery machine. Utility, Wi-Fi to brother, baby lock, pumpkin head, and okay. Great. I'm getting ready to cut out the fabrics for the pumpkin. And on the white fabric around the outside of it, I went ahead and took a black magic marker and I just marked some hash marks on the edges of it so that I can see it on the screen. So I know where to move the, the pieces. And I did put SF-101 on the back of the white fabric and then fuse that entire piece with heat and bond light. I'm going to retrieve data and go to the cloud. It's very helpful to look at your screen while you're putting your fabrics down so you get an idea approximately of where things are. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do now is uh, hit the scan button because I looked at the screen while I was putting my fabrics on the mat. I can see, I, I looked at my computer screen and I can see where these pieces are approximately and that just makes life a lot easier when you're trying to position them on the mat where they go. Okay, this looks good. I'm just going to Move these so that they're right on the fabric. See, it's nice to group those pieces that are, oh look, that's like perfect on there. Just move it a little more center. Those pieces that are all on the same fabric, it's very handy to group them. Boy, I did pretty good. Bring this more down to center. Uh, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to edit object and rotate it just a little bit so it has a little more of a boundary on those points. Okay, that looks good. Okay, okay. One more time, okay. And please select and cut and start. Awesome. Again, this is a standard tack mat, but it was not very sticky and it has been restuck with zig glue. If you have a brand new mat that's super sticky, I recommend that you pounce it with a clean t-shirt first. If you're going to use the purple mat, then you need to uh, cut everything on a brand new mat. I would cut it paper side down and Mirror, be sure to mirror your pieces. Otherwise, you can do this just like this on a low tack mat with no problem. Uh oh, we got a problem. That's an issue. So I'll have to recut that. I guess it just didn't, wasn't stuck down very well. 
I'm gonna go fix this. If you have a piece that needs to be recut, so I just put some more heat and bond light on the back of this. It wasn't adhered well or something. So I'm just gonna put this right back down here. Now I don't want everything to cut again, so I'm gonna get rid of everything on the mat except for the eyelids. Um, let me go back and I'm gonna tap it, edit and trash can and okay. And I'll just go through this. Let me, the part of the mat. So I'm gonna bring this up. I think I did that right. No, I didn't do that right. Let me come all the way over and over here and then down. I don't know if this will work or not. Oh, I don't need to do those already. I deleted those. Tell it okay and okay and delete. Let me make sure. Okay, that got rid of just about everything except for that, and okay. Yeah, you can kind of um, select the mat or whatever. So I want to scan this again and make sure I'm in the right place. All right, I'm going to move this up and over a little bit because I don't want it to cut on that same line as before. All right, this should... This should work. I'm going to tell it OK and select and cut and start. Let's see if it does it. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Oh, good, that worked out perfect. There we go. You can always fix it. We're ready to go sew.
I think he turned out pretty cute. I hope you enjoyed this block. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.